What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. The day has finally come. I drink a Red Bull for this. If you guys know me personally, you know me and caffeine, we do not get along. I'm hyped for today. I'm so excited to finally be able to bring you guys this video. It has been a long time coming. We had delays. We had animals and we had mother nature trying to sabotage the entire project, but we have finally made it guys. And I am beyond excited. I got dressed up here as my best real estate agent that I can to do this open house because we're essentially doing an open house today. And fun fact for all of you guys, one of, if I, I think it might've actually been my first job I ever had. Um, I had to have been 16 at the time and I used to do open houses for a real estate agent, which I know is crazy. Like imagine 16 year old me at this, you know, I think back then there were $500,000 houses, which out here was like, whoa, that's a lot of money. Now what you see behind me, would easily go for that um, if it was obviously on its own piece of land. Old, old 16 year old Ryan <laughs> walking you through these houses, doing open houses all day on Saturdays and Sundays. And that was like my very first job. I don't know if this was law, but I was told I'm legally not allowed to talk the price. So I'd have to write it down on all the uh, little flyers for the houses that people would walk in and yada, yada, yada. Needless to say, I never listened. And I think I sold some houses. I've always loved real estate guys. So if you guys are, you know, new, new to the channel, new to the channel, I've owned real estate since I was very young. And it's just always something that's fascinated me. And before I actually went and got my contractor's license, while I was working in construction, I got all my schooling done to get my real estate license. But then I went to go schedule to get my test and everything online got all screwed up and it got pushed back. And then by the time my test was like ready, I didn't remember anything. So I decided, you know what? Dedicating my life to construction. I still get to play with real estate. And at some point, you know, probably in the very near future, we're not done playing in real estate, guys. Trust me on that one. Regardless, I don't want to bore you with those stories. <sighs> The old Rhino Ranch guest house. This thing was a pain in the butt. If you guys remember from the very beginning, let's look at the uh, entrance here. This was like, you know, old patio doors here that were all rotted away. There was a weird window right there that went past the bathroom wall, let alone on this side over here that, you know, had a tiny little garage window over there. And then that far window over there, well, that, that room didn't even exist. Um, this place has come an absolute long ways. Granted, we're still not done on the exterior. We still got to fence off the front yard. We still got to do some landscaping. We still got to finish the backyard, the fencing, the wrought iron, the stucco, the backfill. All that'll come later. Don't mind if it's a little dirt or water or stuff on the outside here. It poured, it hailed. Uh, weather got pretty crazy last night. And I'm happy to say though, all of this area held up well. If you guys remember, this, this area used to flood pretty heavily when it would rain. It would all come down from there, come into here, let alone the back of the guest house, which almost flooded out the entire project in the middle of the project. But all this handles water well. In fact, I actually just pressure washed this about 30 minutes ago. It's all dry. Now, before we open this door and show you guys the finished product, let's take a look back at everything it took to get to here, as well as a tour of what this place looked like before to kind of refresh some of your memories. We'll be starting work on the old guest house here. And I know I showed this recently in another video and I've, it's been in quite a few videos actually. So this is our guest house. It's actually a decent size. I don't know the exact square footage. I should probably figure that out, but it is a good size guest house. It's got a little, you know, kind of rustic-y ranch style fence around it, which all that's gonna be coming out. And I'll give you guys kind of the plans for this. And it's kind of a good time because I mean, things are things are starting to fall apart here. Taking you guys to the front door of the guest house. This is like, not exactly a front door. It's more uh, French doors to a patio style here. Oh, that looks like it's full of spiders. We're just gonna leave that right now. <laughs> Has seen better days, didn't really like being in the weather. And then you'll see when the front door is closed, you really don't want gaps. Now, this is currently a one bedroom, one bath. Um, you can see it's, it's got a pretty good sized bedroom here. I'd say this is probably 12 by, I don't know, 14, 12 by 16, something like that. We take a look in the bathroom here. The bathroom, trust me, needs to be cleaned. It has seen better days, but this is the bathroom. It's got a little single stall shower, um, toilet, sink. And there's a couple little weird things that we're gonna show you guys in this place in a minute. One of them's in the bathroom. This is, I guess, the living room area. It's got a really, really good sized closet here, which is pretty nice. Um, this closet's actually massive for the size of house that we are in right now. Coming into the kitchen, well, what's about to be the kitchen at some point. This is kind of like a little, I don't know, mud room, I guess you would call it. This was never really designed to be a kitchen. So we just have a fridge in here, a brand new fridge a freezer it's got a long ways to go before this is a kitchen and then obviously you guys have seen in the videos you come into the back section here and this is what i use for most of my storage which is basically a garage but it used to be horse stalls there's horse stall mats everywhere you can see the i don't know what kind of critters come off of being in a horse stall but yeah all this needs to get cleaned up and demoed and just 
free done. So basically I've been using this place for friends that need a place to live. Um, Dedek lived here for a while. According to the previous owner, they had a nanny that lived in here and she had a water fountain feature thing that leaked and that's what caused this flooring to warp right here. This flooring is pretty saturated with um, dog pee. Thanks, Dedek. All this flooring's coming out because it stinks in here. Dedek's dogs did not like being in here. So they tried to get their way out. Not only is that door coming out, but this entire wall right here is gonna be coming out. And then I had mentioned some weird stuff in here. So let me show you guys a couple of the weird design features. I don't even know if you call it a feature. How do I roll this dang window up? Does it just go up? Oh, it's back here. They, they kind of put a wall. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the window keeps going past this wall. It's kind of, it's kind of strange because it goes to like, here. I don't really understand that design idea. I mean, you could have like totally flipped the bedroom door to here, give a bigger bathroom. I don't know. Now that you guys have seen what, uh, I don't know if I call it a dump, but this place, you know, had definitely seen some better years in its life. Let's show you guys now what she looks like. Welcome to the Rhino Ranch guest house. This place has made such a transformation. It is absolutely insane. You know, sometimes, sometimes I hate to pat myself on the back, but I think we kind of, it's kind of a showstopper here. This one kind of blows a lot of my previous 
channel projects out of the water. It was probably the most complete project from start to finish. It's probably the most hands-on project I've done on the channel in a long time. Typically in like my construction world, um, when we dial into stuff like this, I've got subs that do a lot of stuff. It's just how it is. I, I don't have time to sit there and do everything. But on this project, we tackled an absolute ton. So let's give you guys a walkthrough here of the completed project. For those of you that haven't seen all the work that went into it in the previous, I don't even know, 15, 16 videos, uh, please do go check those out. I think it's pretty cool to see this thing come to life. But we got us here, a two bedroom, one bath, 800 square foot, beautiful guest house with mountaintop views on three sides. We got a good sized living room with the built in awesome electric fireplace that heats up the room beautifully. We used it all last night. We were in here cleaning late last night. So if you see like a scuff or two on the wall, it's because we were moving a bunch of stuff and well, haven't had time to touch up. So there's a little bit of paint touch up and a little bit of baseboard touch up that I need to do. Other than that, um, this place is pretty much done. Went ahead and uh, Borrowed the old 65 inch TV there from the shop because we aren't using the uh, podcast studio anymore. So mounted that up there real nice and party, but I think that fireplace came together beautifully. Plenty of room here to put a couch. Viewing angles are great. Everybody kind of freaked out on how like there was a window directly across from the TV. Well, they, they thought of that guys. Check that out, check that out. You just do a little bit of that and boom, you don't ever have to worry about glare or anything. Now, if you remember, harking back with me here, this used to be a wall and this was where like a bunch of refrigerators and old freezers were stored um, from the previous owner. We didn't really use it as much other than Dedek had a fridge and a microwave in there and that's kind of where that was I guess his kitchen. So we went ahead and knocked that wall out. Well right here there used to be like a four foot by four foot closet and that was it. So you basically had four foot by four foot closet to a wall. None of that over there existed so knocked everything down then we went ahead and turned basically where the old closet was into a hallway and that takes you into what is the additional bedroom that we added and essentially converted this into a two bedroom. You know, immensely bringing up the value here by adding a second bedroom. This thing's about 11 by 11 with a beautiful window and I know it's a little bit bright outside but let's see if we can show y'all. Just look at those views. Every bedroom has beautiful, beautiful mountain views. I'm very happy that we decided to go ahead and add the second bedroom. It was something that I had talked about a lot in the beginning and it was a ton of work, a ton of extra framing that we didn't really need to do per se, but I'm so glad number one value wise, but number two, like the flow of this place is just so much cooler having that second bedroom. We're going to save the kitchen for last. So give me a second guys, we're going to get there, but let's come into the master bedroom. Um, I don't think you're allowed to say that anymore, God forbid. Uh, but hey, this is the master bedroom. This room was already a really good sized room and we didn't have to do much, but we did need to put in a legal window because it didn't have a legal egress window. It had a little like garage style window that went up there. It was probably, I don't know, 16 inches or so, way too high up off the ground. You couldn't see out of it unless you were like six foot seven, six foot eight. So that had to go and we ended up putting in this nice big, like four foot by five foot window or whatever this ended up being. Um, and again, just beautiful, beautiful views out of this room. And it brightened this room up immensely. I don't know how the GoPro is doing with the lighting in here, but we don't have any lights on. And we can actually turn the lights on because what well, we also added a bunch of LED recess lighting as well as a fan to be able to keep people cool in here. This place does so well temperature wise though without having any um, air conditioning in it. The other thing we did is we built out this closet. So this wall obviously used to just go back to there and it was flat all the way across. Obviously to be like a proper bedroom, you need a closet. So ended up building out that closet. Same with the other room, don't know if I mentioned it. Well, we obviously we framed out the whole room, but got a beautiful closet with the mirrored closet doors, which again, I'm a fan of because they make rooms just feel so much bigger, especially when they're light and bright like this. Now coming into the bathroom, this is a place that I didn't change a ton, but we changed enough to make it much, much nicer. We kept the original shower, albeit it is a small shower, but it works. And it actually cleaned up really well. So this was like a two to $3,000 change. If we wanted to change it, I opted to where it wasn't worth the money, um, especially considering all the money we spent on this place, which I asked you guys on Instagram, if you guys want me to do like a price breakdown of this entire project, let me know on the comment section here if you would like to do that. It's not something I typically do. I don't like to talk prices or money and I don't even know if my hat's a little crooked there. Um, it, it seems braggadocious to me and I don't like to do that, but on a project like this, it might be able to help you guys out on something you're doing at your own house. So we just kind of basically freshened up this bathroom, you know? Added my beautiful crystal light fixture there, brand new toilets, new paint. Again, don't mind the window being dirty here, but the audibles I called was to actually fix this window that went way too far past this wall. So we ended up putting in the right size window for the room. We removed the pedestal sink that was right there in the weird little 
corner shelf. We actually put in a nice vanity, sink, mirror. And again, it just makes this bathroom feel, seem, and look so much bigger and brighter and happier. Cause you know, if you're taking a poop, you wanna be happy. Now working our way out. So let's go to everybody's favorite part, my favorite. Probably the biggest transformation because well, kitchen never existed here. So we added this beautiful kitchen and uh, Huge shout out to Chris. Thank you to Chris for kind of helping me with the layout, getting the cabinets and everything dialed in, as well as getting me the countertop guys. I'll give all my thank yous here in a minute as the people that helped out, but check this beautiful kitchen out, guys. So I'll kind of walk you guys through some of the features. Obviously, we added a peninsula because there's, because albeit this is actually a good size space and we ended up with more room than I kind of thought we would, I still didn't want to have to clutter this with like a dining table, albeit you could but this is enough room for two people to comfortably sit and eat at uh, the peninsula. All you need is two little bar stools right there and you are good to go. Now, making our way in. This is probably something you guys haven't seen. I know I didn't actually film this in another video. Um, I did some time lapses, but we ended up going with this super cool white wavy backsplash. I think it's just modern enough. Um, it's bright enough. I think it looks really, really cool. And it was something different, you know, something I haven't personally ever touched or done. And I think it turned out great. And they're big size tiles. We actually had to trim them down. So these were 12 inch tiles, which, you know, this is a, about an 18 inch space right here to put the tile. If I would have put a 12 inch, we would have had to put um, like a six inch piece on top. And that would have looked goofy to me. So I actually took two 12 inch tiles and cut them down to like eight and three quarters or whatever that ended up being. That way they're the same size tile all the way through instead of having to just scab on a little piece on top. It's little details like that to me that make a huge difference when it comes to getting something finished. Would have been much quicker if I didn't do that, but I'm glad I did. So let's just kind of take a peek this way, staring out from the kitchen, out into the living room, staring at the beautiful fireplace, plenty of room. You can see the TV from essentially anywhere in the room here. Now let's come over to our beautiful, I don't really know what it's called, but it's like, like a black stainless sink, but it's not truly black stainless but this thing looks super sick and is a showstopper here in this white countertop. Now this countertop is Bianca, Bianco Carrera, something along those lines, quartz. Obviously topped it off with a black faucet there just to kind of tie in with some of the black accents. I think this area turned out absolutely killer. Um, let's not discount the fact that we used navy blue cabinets, which you know kind of matches the old, the old suit jacket here. Definitely something I was kind of worried about on edge. Our original plan here was to go white cabinets with like a dark gray or some type of gray countertop. And man, am I glad that the old supply chain issue made it so you can't find white cabinets anywhere. And we ended up going with those blue because that blue just turned out so sick and really sets this whole kitchen apart from you know too many that I've seen out there. Then we took, uh, it's like a brushed aluminum, brushed stainless kind of look there on the handles. Um, if you guys watch, these are all prefab cabinets. Now again, you can go full bore and spend a ton of money and have custom cabinets made or prefab cabinets are pretty freaking nice nowadays. And the best part is you can get all soft closed drawers and all that for super cheap as opposed to actually having those built. Now I totally just noticed, I forgot a little, little outlet cover back there behind the fridge, but you know, we'll just, we'll just won't look at that. Now I did make a, a little boo-boo or actually a really big boo-boo and uh, can't say that I'm proud of it. But over here on the cooktop side of things, you guys might see, you might not see it. We'll talk about it here in a second. This area turned out super rad. I mean, this looks like a high-end, I don't, I don't know, high-end kitchen in a big old house, which one of the things I like to do is I like to take a lot of features from high-end houses and scale them down for smaller houses. It's what I did at my old house um, and it's what I want to do at the main house. Granted, the main house is actually pretty big, but at the main house, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, if any of you guys are out there renovating your house and you have a smaller house, like it's kind of ideal to take high-end stuff and scale it down for your house because it's a lot cheaper because you use a lot less of it. So whether that be backsplashes or your countertops or your flooring, whatever, if you're gonna use a lot less of it, even though it's more expensive, just go ahead and spend the money and you're gonna make your house like elevated and look that much cooler. So anyways, over here, we decided to go with our large format tiles to do like a little feature backsplash wall and we ended up backsplashing the entire wall all the way up and let me tell you, <laughs> I don't think I'm a fan of large format tiles after that. They were definitely not as fun as I figured it would be, being like, oh, that's only two, four, six, eight, you know, 10 tiles. Look okay, at that knocked out like that. Yeah, large format tiles, another animal. Found that out, but hey, got it done. And don't worry, um, you're gonna see like outlet covers and stuff like that. Like these are gonna get switched out to gray outlets and gray covers eventually, but I just wanted to get this video done for you guys and get this thing knocked out. So we've obviously got our gas cooktop over here. We got our vent hood here, and this is where my boo-boo is, guys. I was installing this thing. Number one, the instructions sucked on this. Number two, I had it hanging on their hook mounted to the wall, 
and it literally just got nudged and it fell off the hook and well we ended up with a nice big old ding in her there so don't worry she's gonna be getting replaced but in the essence of just getting this video done I, I, we got us a little ding in our vent hood but good thing is everything still functions um, you know we've got lights up underneath we've got different vent modes here you can hear the fans kick on maybe I'll stop talking low medium high it's not super loud. Obviously, we got our recessed lights up above in our little niche there, but I'm glad we also went this route, which helped widen the kitchen because this used to be a wall all the way across, but we knocked this wall out, bumped it back just enough to get those cabinets in there, and we have a really good sized kitchen in here. I mean, this is bigger than most galley kitchens that I see in like full size homes. I should also mention, recessed lighting pretty much throughout the entire house. We did it in the living room, which you guys can kind of see there behind me. We did it in the kitchen. There's so much light that comes in here. Number one, we got plenty of natural light during the daytime if I were just to shut all these lights off and you know crack all these windows open. But it gets dark out the range, and you want to make sure the buildings that you're in are nice and well lit. So this area lights up really well at night. Um, it, it's just beautiful in here. All the shots that I did earlier, the cinematic shots were all shot at night. That way I didn't have any of the glare from outside or anything like that messing with the camera, but this place just looks beautiful daytime or nighttime. Now, some of the challenges that we ran into when we were building, um, quite a few. Number one, this area used to be like a garage or a, I'm not sure what this area was, but these floors slope in like 42 different directions. And there was just no way to completely fix it without completely cutting out this slab and replacing the entire thing, which then does weird stuff to all of your door openings because this needs to come up like six inches. So we definitely had our work cut out for us in getting this area to where you can't tell that any of the floors are weird. And I think we knocked it absolutely out of the park. If you look at that bottom piece right there of shiplap, you'll see that on that side, it's bigger than on that side. Well, the top of it's level, the bottom isn't because I, th I think I mixed that up. But regardless, the floor sloped that way. So that side ends up being a bigger piece than that side because that side of the flooring is higher than this side. And it took a lot of tricks like that, like a lot of tricks like that to get this place to where you can walk around and it feels normal. The kitchen here was the absolute worst. I mean, this area like shot back that way. From about right there to right there, there was like a two inch height difference. So we feathered all that out. Shout out to Oscar, the cabinet guy, for getting these cabinets in nice and level to where, again, it hides the flooring underneath and how bad the actual like slab was prior to us putting some self leveler in. Uh, every step we did basically helped to hide some of the like irregularities in the floor. So. It was just layer by layer by layer, we got it to where again, you could walk around this place and 95% of the people walking in here would have no idea that there's anything weird in the floor. And on top of having the floor issues to deal with, um, we then had to deal with the donkeys that tried to flood the house and broke off the spigot on the other side of that wall. And we had to tear open the drywall after the drywall and the baseboards and the flooring was all done and reopen all that up and get that dialed back in. Um, and thankfully, again, you cannot tell any of that stuff was touched. So one of the things I did when building this place is we kind of planned for a lot of stuff should we want to do it in the future. You saw it outside with all the drain lines and the irrigation lines and stuff that we ran just to get it in already when we poured our new concrete. That way if we go to do it later on, it is much, much easier. And this place is no exception. We've already pre-wired for pendant lighting to go above the peninsula. It was one thing I had planned on doing. I kind of like it open now. I don't know if I want to do it. Uh, what do you guys think? You think we should hang two pendants above the peninsula or should we just leave it nice and beautiful and wide open like it is? Now, if you guys have watched this channel for any extended period of time, you guys know I go above and beyond. Sometimes I go way too bougie. Sometimes I just, I don't even know what the word is, but I put in way too much details than I should. And some may call it a flaw, but I think it ends up always working out for the best. Um, this fireplace was an afterthought. It wasn't something we had originally planned on doing, but in this room right here, there was just no like definition of where the living room was. Previously, Dedek had a couch on this wall, I believe a little TV stand there and a TV. And I was looking at that and I'm like, all right, well that probably makes the most sense because, well, obviously you can't hang a TV on that wall. There's a window there. You could probably put the TV in the corner, but again, this used to be a double door and we hadn't really decided if we were gonna put a double door back there or not. But I was like, yeah, well, I guess that makes sense. Couch there, TV there. And then I kind of sat around here one night, probably about midnight or 1 a.m. and I'm like, you know what would look cool and actually define the space is if we built an area that the TV has to go on because now you just defined this is the living room, that's where the couch goes, 
that's where the TV is. It's little details like that that really do help define a space. And I'm not the greatest interior designer. I'm no pro at this. I've worked with a lot of really great interior designers. And we were dealing with supply chain issues left and right. So a lot of the stuff you see here was like, that's all we had. And we had to pick from the best of what was available at the time. And I don't know how it honestly came together this well, but it came together this well. Now again, this project ended up being much more than I had originally anticipated when we first delved into this. It was literally gonna be, you know, new flooring, a little bit of paint, figure out just kind of how to throw a kitchen in real quick and call it good. But it was one of those things, once I opened up walls, once I had, you know, the door, we decided we we're gonna pull it out and we were like, well, we could change the opening size and we could patch the stucco. Well, if we're patching the stucco, we might as well replace a window. Well, if we're replacing one window, we might as well replace a couple of windows. It just kind of snowballed like that. And it ended up being, again, way more money than I had planned on spending, but it's one of those things where it's cheaper to do it while the wall's open. It's cheaper to do it while your stucco guys here are already doing other patches. It's cheaper to do it all at the same time than it is to, than it is to do part of it, come back later, reopen stuff up, do another part of it, come back later, reopen stuff up. Thankfully, I was able to afford to keep going. Um, and if you guys can, do it that way. If you can't, save up until you can. Um, especially projects like this. You never know what you're gonna find when you open walls. We opened up this wall right here, and if you guys remember, we found that like the framing went below grade outside, and there was water issues, and there was a little bit of mold issues, so we ended up ripping that out, pouring a new concrete stem wall over there. Hold on, I'm backwards on the camera. Pouring a new concrete stem wall over there, getting the actual bottom plate up off the ground, using a pressure-treated bottom plate. Just a lot of little stuff that turned into multiple, multiple, multiple trips to Home Depot to get stuff figured out and fixed. And speaking of that, I know all of you guys are wondering how many trips have we put into this to Home Depot since whatever point I uh, talked about it. I don't know how many total over the long run, but since, I don't know, what, five, six, seven videos ago when I said I would start keeping track, and I told you guys, make your best guess on how many more trips to Home Depot you thought it would take, the winner was gonna get a billet bottle opener, one of the work for billet bottle openers, um, which by the way, if you guys are watching this and you don't know, and you're new to the channel, please go check out my website, workforapparel.com. We got a bunch of cool shirts, hats, stickers, decals. But now is the moment, of how many trips to Home Depot it took. And it took a lot. And every time I thought I was done, I would need like one little thing. And I'm like, man, whoever guessed that time before is gonna be pissed. So if you guessed 15, you were so close, and I literally needed a drill bit for tile to be able to mount the hood over there in the kitchen. And that's what put us over to 16 total Home Depot trips, which means, let me check my YouTube here and uh, see who commented 16 first. Okay, it took me a minute, guys. I totally forgot what video I posted that on. So I'm scrolling all the way back to the oldest comments. We got 690 comments on this video. Again, thank you to all you guys as I'm scrolling back here. Don't worry, I'm still working. I'm still working while I'm talking. Um, all you guys that comment, that like, subscribe, share these videos. That's a huge help to people like us on the YouTube world. You know, YouTube's algorithm gets weird sometimes. Sometimes you guys will notice like, hey, I've been following you, but I get no notifications of new videos. Or hey, YouTube somehow unsubscribed me. Um, we don't know why that happens, but every little bit that you guys do totally helps us out. Um, again, you know, YouTube does bring us revenue, which allows us to keep going and keep filming and keep working and putting out content for you guys. Oh my gosh, I had to go digging all the way to the back. And I gotta give credit to this guy. He was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. The 14th comment that day, Russell Smith nailed it with 16 trips. So Russell, if you're out there, brother, um, Preferably reach out to me on Instagram, otherwise send me an email and I will get you your uh, work for it billet bottle opener, which you guys can purchase if you guys would like one. These things are super, super rad. I started looking through to see if somebody else guessed 16 later on down the road because I, you know, I got a bunch of them. And let's see, oh, we got Trey Hicks. Trey Hicks also guessed 16. I feel like giving out two. So Trey, if you're watching this as well, you weren't first. I don't believe in participation trophies, but I do believe in giving cool stuff to you guys. So. Trey, reach out to me as well. Um, I don't know, however you guys can prove that it's actually you. And I will get you guys your billet bottle openers sent out. Now again, we may be done on the inside here. We still have a ton of work to do on the outside of the old guest house. But I am very happy to finally, finally be able to 
check that booger off our list as done. I know some of you guys are gonna, you know, probably be super excited that we're not doing any more guest house interior renovation videos. Well, I know some of you guys are gonna miss them. And those of you that always comment, and I, I see you guys in the comment section, you guys are super rad. Thank you guys for always supporting me, watching all the stuff that I do, because it is an absolute chore to work and film any of the projects that we do out here. It's a ton of work, it adds a ton of work, and it adds a ton of time. And there's sometimes days where I just don't feel like putting, picking up a camera and I'd rather just work, but I know you guys want the content, so I put in the work for you guys and I appreciate all of the support that you guys give us back. Now, while I'm not new to building things and I'm not new to construction, there was a lot of stuff in this project that I don't typically do. You know, I don't install exterior doors and windows and a few other things that uh, it just wasn't worth having somebody come out here to do. So I have a general knowledge of tools. I have a general knowledge of building. I have a general knowledge of how things are supposed to go together. And I just jumped in and did it. And hopefully that motivates any of you guys that have projects at your house that you want to take on or you know you want to get out there and start a new career or whatever it may be. Jump in and try. You don't know till you try what you're capable of. I did a lot more things in this house than I thought that I was really going to be able to successfully pull off. But that's kind of what happens when we're way out in the middle of nowhere and not a lot of people want to come out here. Uh, you just got to get in there and you got to do it yourself. Huge thank you to Chris. Chris did a ton behind the scenes. I know everybody says Chris is lazy and just stands around and does nothing, but Chris was making phone calls. Chris was scheduling stuff for me. Chris was pulling off a bunch of stuff for me to get this thing done. So huge thank you to Chris. Huge thank you to Dedic. Dedic came out and helped out for a little bit. Obviously Abel and Poppy, they're always out here just busting their butts. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a ton of people and a ton of companies. Uh, huge thank you to all those guys for coming out here and helping me get this thing done. I'm happy to finally check that off the list, guys. She is done. She's ready to be moved into. Um, obviously you can see our tenant that's currently living in the garage can finally move in and actually enjoy the house and hopefully not destroy it. One thing I'm not is I'm not a slumlord. This wasn't a flip. This wasn't uh, just get something cheap and rent it out. I do things right, I build things right, and I want things to be nice, and I think that's reflected in here. But with that, guys, we're gonna wrap up. I know this is a long video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.